This is Sonic Control's Doll School, where you learn how to plan and buy the right computer system to record your music. So get ready, because here comes the teacher. All right, let's go to the next step and let's talk about what are the component parts of the computer. Now, what I'm going to pass on to you will be true for the Mac and for the PC. There will be a couple of exceptions for the Mac, and that will be if you're looking at an iMac or if you're looking at a Mac Mini. But if you're looking at a Mac Pro or a comparable system on the PC, everything I'm going to tell you right now um, is, is just about the same regardless of the platform. Okay, so let's look at that. All right, let's talk about the parts of your digital audio workstation, not including the software. Now, the first part is, and this is going to sound really obvious, like it's a, it's a brain dead statement, but it's really not. The first part is the case. If it's a PC, you can have what they call a mid tower or a desktop, or if you want a horizontal case, um, that's called a rack mount unit. The Macintosh does not have rack mount units. Only the PCs have rack mount units. Now that case needs to be sturdy and it needs to be certified so it can handle at least four hard drives and it needs a power supply of at least 550 watts if not more. Now that may sound like a really odd requirement but let me tell you over the years, we discovered that one of the big things with a digital audio workstation to avoid unnecessary pops and clicks is the power supply. So the better the power supply, the more powerful the power supply, the least likely you're going to get pops and clicks when you're doing your recording. All right. The next thing I have my list here, just so I don't get lost, is the hard drives. Now, I said that you need to have at least four hard drives available in a case. If you can find one with five, even better. I'll explain why later. But the drives are going to be first a C drive. That's where your programs are being going to be installed. Everybody has an opinion about what size to get, but the prices now are so low on these things. I just get a 500 gigabyte drive for your C drive. Thereafter, for all your other drives, I would look to get a one terabyte drive. Now, drives have speeds. The one you want to look for is 7,500 RPM. I've seen people criticize certain types of software on forums, and they slam this software. And then one day they found out that they were running it on a software, uh, running it on a hard drive that was too slow. And that as soon as they got it onto a hard drive that was 7,500 RPM, wow, it worked just fine. So here's what you need to know. Almost all the software is designed to work on drives that are 7,500 RPM. If you have a laptop, you can do things um, if it's a really well-optimized program. Some of those hard drives will be 5,400 on a laptop. You want to see if you can find the 7,500 RPM. Just be aware of that. Now, there are other speeds for hard drives. There are 10,000 RPM and there are 15,000 RPM. But those, some people really like those drives, but they're smaller. And you're not able to put the same amount of, of um, libraries on those drives as you can with the larger uh, one terabyte drives. And they're very expensive. And unless you're a speed demon, nobody has really found... Um, that the gain was really worth it to stick a hard drive in there that was so expensive that you needed four or five to do the work of one that was at 7,500 RPM. Yes, there will be people on the web who will take what I just said and say I'm crazy, but I'm not. So, but if you want to use the faster drives, you can just understand you won't be able to have as much storage and you will pay a big price financially for it. I personally don't think it's worth the expense. Um, some people do. Some people swear by them. Um, I haven't known too many people who swore at them. But I personally think there are better places you can put your money. But that's for you to consider. Okay, next on the list, as I look at my sheet here, you need a DVD drive that reads and burns 
as well. You need to have RAM and you need to have a motherboard. And finally, you need to have a CPU. And almost always on a digital audio workstation, there will be a video card. Now, all of those components fit on one piece of technology called a motherboard. Now, that motherboard has all your Firewire connections on it. It has your USB connections on it. Um, it will have a place for your RAM. There are slots on there for your video card. And there will be a slot on there also if you want to use an audio card that plugs onto the motherboard. That's uh, still available, but not as becoming less and less common because most audio cards are connected to the computer um, at a professional level with Firewire. Some are connected with USB 2.0. What you want to know on that motherboard is how much RAM can it contain. Almost all of the motherboards on the PC that you find even in Best Buy and places like that are capable of handling 8 gigabyte of RAM with what's called the Core 2 Duo processor. Um, my advice to you and what we're finding pretty consistently is you want to have a motherboard that is able to handle 16 gigabyte or better. Now that is what an industrial strength motherboard. Those, if it once you get above eight gig right now, those are called server boards. And so you want to have a server motherboard that is capable of handling 16 gigabyte of RAM because that's where the technology is going. All the libraries coming out through 2009, 2010 are going to be 64 bit. They are going to be memory hungry because the more memory and the faster the processor, um, the more they're going to be able to do in terms of giving you quality sounds and things that are just uh, make production life a lot easier. Uh, one of the things that it makes a lot easier is the fact that most everybody wants to have all of their software in one computer. Now that can be possible depending upon the kind of music you're producing if you're serious about going into film scoring, um, you're not going to be able to get it all on one computer. If you're going to get out there and compete, you're going to need a studio that's got several computers. Um, and again, that's something we'll talk about later. But that motherboard needs to have 16, be able to have 16 gigabyte of RAM. On the Mac, that's not even a question. On the Mac Pro, that motherboard is already set to be able to handle up to 32 gigabyte of RAM. So you have plenty of room to expand on the Mac. One point I do want to make to you about the motherboard, and whether it's the Mac or the PC, when you order your computer, you want to determine uh, how many slots for RAM are on that motherboard. And the reason for that is because, let's say it's a, your motherboard is rated for um, 32 gig, but it has eight slots in it. Well, that means that each slot, ideally, should have uh, RAM that's uh, a size of 4 gigabyte. And most of the time, RAM works in pairs. Um, so you want to find out how that motherboard works so that when you're planning your station, you don't want to put yourself in a position that you're buying RAM today that's a little less expensive because you, you didn't get as much as you wanted, but then you find out, oh, you do need more RAM, and then you go and buy it, and now you have these um, RAM chips sitting around, uh, RAM modules, rather, and you can't do anything with them because you don't they're not uh, the right size for maybe some of the other systems in your studio. So in your planning for a system, plan the RAM. Just remember that. Plan the RAM. And my advice is, you can start as low as four gigabyte, but if you can afford to start with eight, that's better. You will be glad that you did, especially on the Mac with where all that development is going. Okay, we have covered all the basic parts of the computer. Now, when we get together next time, we're gonna have a discussion about the differences between the Mac and the PC. 
And I've already told you that the right one to buy is dependent upon the software that you get. So uh, as you once you've made that selection, even so, um, there are still some unique differences between the PC and the Mac. And it doesn't make one better than the next. It just makes um, some, it makes it different. Um, for some people, different is not good. But uh, you're going to know all about that. And we will look at that in our next webisode of DAW School. And until then, be blessed.